CSC's new research stream as the WDC focuses on the history of diabetes across the 20th century. I'm now joined by Pierre Lefebvre, who's chairing that stream. Pierre, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you. So first of all, tell us how this stream came about. Why is it important for diabetologists to know about the history of diabetes? Well, uh, this uh, came from a conversation uh, I had uh, a year or two ago with Paul Zimmet, the chairman of this uh, uh, program committee and we had realized that uh, people who now work on diabetes, do research on diabetes, do not always know the background and uh, all the things have been done, uh, let's say only uh, 40 or 50 years ago and uh, you know science is, is an evolution and uh, we have the possibility, we had the possibility to gather some of those who have been really active in the field and so they can tell us what was the situation uh, let's say uh, 40 50 years ago and how they have progressed in their research to improve knowledge and care for people with diabetes what are some of the important developments across the 20th century the things that the stream will be focusing on well you know you you we, we could just take one example let's say for instance insulin uh, the, the whole thing started in the uh, 20th century uh, insulin has been discovered in 1921 then it has been isolated it has been purified it has been crystallized then the place of origin of the insulin has been described to be in the islets of Langerhans there have been numerous studies to know uh, how uh, insulin is secreted from the pancreas and then it's only 40 years ago that people started to really understand how insulin is working. So for all those who have to take care of people with diabetes and uh, prescribing uh, insulin, insulin shots uh, three, four, five times a day, it's good that they know exactly uh, how, what has been the history of this life-saving uh, drug or substance that is insulin. So uh, we had a unique opportunity to have people who have known uh, how to treat uh, diabetes 50 years ago and what have been the improvement, what have been all the changes in the insulin, the way it has to be given, the way it has to be injected. And so that's interesting. So the way that we now know about the changes in yes. diabetes, yes. that can really impact future developments in the field. Yes, abso absolutely true. You know, the, there is an old say of the uh, chairman Mao Zedong, you know, the, the, the guy in China who once said, uh, you know, to, to go over the large river, you have to be a good swimmer. So uh, now, the, but he said something which is more, more, uh, more profound, which is that uh, uh, you have to know the past to understand the present and prepare for the future. And this is exactly what we, we did in this uh, stream, just to gather about 10 leaders, people who are still active, but who have been really involved in their respective fields and uh, who came with this message. There is one, for instance, coming from here, Australia, a wonderful story that Dr. Odia will uh, present a uh, story of the uh, aborigines in this country who were found to have uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and that they were not prescribed any drug, they just got a one-way ticket to go back to their original bush and to, to live the, the life of their ancestors, you know, uh, fishing, uh, hunting, uh, uh, working the earth. After seven weeks, their type 2 diabetes has been completely cured they had lost 10 kilograms, blood glucose normalized, cholesterol normalized. So there, there is a very big message there that we have probably lost a very uh, healthy lifestyle uh, in, in our times. Wonderful to speak to you on this, Pierre. Thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm.